Morning, morning, morning. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Love 500. Today, rather than a video of working on a car, I'm going to go through some of the common faults that you will find on a Fiat 500. So if you're looking at getting into buying a Fiat 500 or you're getting into working on a Fiat 500, stay tuned, watch this video, and I will show you the most common faults associated with these cars. So this is fault number one. As you can see here, it's raining today. That is the top of the front suspension. So that's the top of the strut. As you can see, water is dripping off the windscreen onto this and into there. And that's where it sits. This is a cup design. I think it's even called a cup. And as you can see, you've got a thread there and then under the thread is a bolt. And as you can see, it's quite brown. Uh, this is a 63 plate car. This is a very common fault that those go rusty, or the bolts go rusty. Uh, and therefore if the bolt fails, then that's going to move around. And you often see on uh, MOTs that there's movement in that, backwards and forwards. And that's because, usually, rust. Now you can buy covers to go over there, plastic covers, or rubber covers, and they will make the water drip off. But if you buy a second-hand Fiat 500, and it's got those covers on, they just push on, so just take them off and have a look and see what the state of those bolts is underneath. If they haven't got the covers, see what they're like. If they are really rusty, this one's not too bad. You can see that the bolt is still in position. Let's have a look at the other side. So at the moment, that one's not got any water in it. It's wet, but there's no water in it. And the bolt is relatively rusty, but I think it's not rusty enough to not come undone. So if you're gonna have a new strap put on, those bolts will probably have to be broken to get them off. Not on this one, but quite often when they are in bad condition. So as I say, take off those rubber covers if you've got rubber covers and check those, because if they are really rusty, that's a good bargaining point to uh, get a bit of a knockdown price on on the asking price of the car if you're gonna if you're looking at buying one. So have a good look at that. Uh, and that's the first thing, the top mount struts. Second thing to be aware of, so you've got the earth cable here that comes from the battery. This car is somewhat disassembled, so there's no battery or battery tray in it at the moment. So that's the earth cable, the main earth cable, and that's the quick release button on it. So if you follow that cable where that cable goes down, it goes down and it terminates down here. And then also attached to that same point is this, this black cable. Now that comes from that point there on the chassis leg and then goes to underneath this is this is the slave cylinder for the clutch underneath there is a bolt where the other side the other end of this uh, earth cable connects to that is a very common fault that these go this one looks okay it has got a rubber casing on it however inside there the cable can get corroded this one looks quite corroded down here, so before I put the battery tray back in, I will give it a good clean up. So if you undo that nut, I think it's a 13 millimeter nut, undo the nut, take off all of those earth cables, get a bit of sandpaper, a bit of wet and dry, something like that, give them a good sand down, the bolts and the point where it earths as well. Uh, don't bother doing that end because it's a bit of a pain if you uh, have to take it out. Well, it's not a pain, but there's no need to do it, but definitely do that end. So the main earth coming from the battery goes to there and then that one spreads your earth out across the entire earthing network of the car. People have starting problems, your car doesn't turn over, electrics don't work properly, power steering sometimes doesn't work. That can all be caused by that main earth because that earth down there, which is also on a painted area of the car, i.e. the chassis leg, is not necessarily a brilliant earth. So it runs that other cable to the gearbox. So if you're having any problems, starting problems or electrical problems, that could be the reason. It's a bit difficult to check that when you're buying a car because the battery and the battery tray is in there. But it's something to be aware of should, um, should anything go wrong. 
So that's that one. While we're at this part of the car, the clutch mechanism on a Fiat 500 is a bit of a dog's dinner. You've got a, 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 a clutch slave cylinder and a clutch master cylinder. This is the slave cylinder for the clutch. So when you put your foot on the clutch, it pushes from the master cylinder, it pushes fluid down the cable, down this pipe. All this pipe comes along here. That then pushes out that rod, which connects to the gearbox, which then disengages the clutch. You put it into gear, you take your foot off the clutch, that returns back and you're in drive mode. These can leak. It's usually, because you've got a master and a slave cylinder, they usually leak between the join between the two. It's a quick release join, but it's recommended that if you change one of these, you change both of them. Um, because sometimes the join doesn't connect properly and you'll get a leak from it. If you get a leak, you lose hydraulic pressure, your clutch won't work properly. Uh, the other thing that sometimes breaks on these is this. It's a bit dirty on this car, but you've got a green nylon bush there. You've got the green bit in the middle, and then you've got the outer bit. Sometimes these separate, and that rod pops off. And that is your gear selector. And you can't get your car into gear, or out of gear if it's already in gear, if that breaks. What you can do is when that comes off, you can take this piece off, you can then take that piece off of the, the ball joint, take it into the garage, clean it up, and then you can use super glue to join the two together. You can get a replacement if you want to, but it's easier to actually, and, it, and I've done one before and it's still going. I've done one about four years ago and it's still, still okay. It's a lot easier to actually repair it. Uh, if, it if you go into the garage to do it, get them to replace it. But if you're gonna do it yourself, super glue or a cheap pound shop, two part resin glue will glue that perfectly well. Leave it for a couple of hours to set and then put it back on and it'll be fine. Moving over to the slaves, uh, the master cylinder. This is the clutch master cylinder. This is your clutch fluid. So down there is where your clutch pedal is. So you depress the clutch pedal. It then pushes the fluid round. That pipe there is the one that goes all the way around the back of the car. That, oops, down and then back to the uh, master cylinder, uh, slave cylinder. So somewhere, I'm not quite sure where the join is actually, I've never actually physically done one myself, but the, where the, wherever the join is, that's the pain bit where you need to do both. You often find that these are broken and they're, they're held on with a piece of, uh, with a cable tie or something. If you're looking at a car and you see that's crooked or it's, you haven't got the bracket on it there, another negotiating way of uh, getting the price down a little bit. So that's the clutch. It slightest little knock on the front of a car and that bracket will break. You've got three brackets on a headlight. You've got that one there, you've got one about here, and then there's another one that connects it to the uh, edge of the wing. This is the one that usually breaks. So if that's broken, you can buy a repair kit which costs £10 on eBay, which will give you all three brackets. Headlight has to come out. To get that out, you have to take the bumper off. If you're looking at a car to buy and you notice that's been repaired, glued, whatever, more negotiating price to replace that. To, to actually use the uh, repair kit properly, what you do is you take the headlight out, you grind off whatever's left of the bracket, and then on here, you can't see them with the headlight on, but on here there's screw holes, and the new brackets just screw on. It actually makes it more, uh, more secure than they were with the original one. This, these are the original ones, these haven't broken. But it's another thing to look out for, that's the headlight brackets. So, the dreaded door handles. This is one of the, the most common things that go wrong with a Fiat 500. Normally, you've just got the hinge loose here. So if you pull the handle and it's loose that end, the hinge is snapped. It's a design fault. The metal that's used to make that hinge corrodes and breaks. So with the action of opening the door, it just breaks. It's easy to fix. However, if it's broken and you're buying the car, it's again a negotiating tool to be able to um, get the price down. You can look at my other videos. I haven't got a video specifically on just how to uh, fix that. It's an easy fix. The part is about five pounds from eBay. You have to take the door card off inside the door and then there's a 10 mil nut which you take off and you can do it without taking the entire handle off. 
I have got a video on how to change the handle. Uh, if you look at my now to how to videos, you'll see how to do the entire handle. It goes both sides. The driver's one is the most common because that's the one that's used the most. So that's the door handle. One of the other very, very common issues which can cause all sorts of problems on a Fiat 500. We're on a different car now, this is in our bath. This is the hatch wiring. So as you can see, with the closing and opening of the hatch constantly through the life of a car, this concertina piece of rubber that the cables that come out of the body of the car and then come into here, some of them run up here, some of them go along there. But so they feed all the electric. So you've got your boot handle, you've got your rear view stop light, you've got your rear wiper, you've got your heated rear window and so on. All of those things are operated from the cables in there. Now this is probably, after the door handles, this is without doubt the most common fault in a Fiat 500. And many other cars as well, but I, I feel that Fiat 500s suffer more, disproportionately more, from this problem. So the wires in there get strained. They end up breaking. First of all, the outer sheathing, plastic sheathing goes on it. I'm, gonna, I'm putting some pictures up for you now so you can see one that I've done in the past. But the outer sheathing goes in it and then the wires eventually break. But when the sheathing goes, then the sheathing goes on one wire, then it goes on another wire and another wire. The wires end up touching, shorting out, causing all sorts of problems. They can come up with airbag issues on the dashboard. They can come up with your wiper will go randomly. Sometimes it works, sometimes it won't. Um, yeah, all sorts of random things will, will happen. Uh, and that always leads to this this problem so unfortunately it's a job and a half um, you can if you peel back this you pull it out of the the uh, bit where it goes into the hatch or into the car this is the best bit to do there's not much to play with unfortunately and you'll see the broken wires uh, you can solder them and use uh, shrink wrap heat shrink um, to and then more more masking tape not masking tape um insulation tape that's that's a repair that's a bit of a bodge repair because it will break again without a doubt you can buy kits on ebay for about 40 pounds uh, and i'll put a picture up of one of those kits now right. um fiat made a big mistake in the design and the type of wiring they used and uh, the, the wiring that you buy has got a different type of sheathing around it which is more flexible and doesn't doesn't crack and break uh, that's the best way to repair it so if you're getting any problems with any of the electrics in the hatch, that's your likely problem. So peel back that sheathing there, as you can see in the uh, some of the steels that I'm showing you now, and you'll see whether you've got any broken wires there or not. Even if the wires aren't broken, they may not show it, look as if they're broken, but they can still be broken inside. Um, but you have to gauge and see what the ones are that are causing the problem. So that's the hatch wiring. So we're sitting in the car now, the red one that we were just showing you the top mounts for. Uh, another very common, this is probably probably the third most common, third or fourth most common problem. I can't switch the ignition on on this one. Um, this one does have the fault. Uh, and I think if I can find a picture of the fault, I will put it up now for you to see. So what you often get is uh, you, you sometimes you only uh, see it at night. Um, sometimes you'll see it in the day as well. So when your lights are on or when you're indicating, you will notice usually the airbag light over this side somewhere. Uh, sometimes the handbrake light, it varies from, from problem to problem, but they will glow dimly. It often happens when you put your right hand indicator on or your left hand indicator on, the other one will, will be very dim but flashing as well. It's not an MOT failure if they're really dim, however, it does lead on to other problems. Sometimes the, the uh, display in the middle completely goes. So these have got a notorious fault in them that they fail. Basically the circuit board on them fails. You can send them off to be repaired. Um, you can replace them. So if you're gonna replace one, you can buy one on eBay for somewhere between 60 and 100 pounds. If you're gonna replace it, what you need to do, so this is a 2013 car, so I would get one from the same generation of car. If you buy up to, if your car is between 2008 and the middle of 2010 without start-stop, 
and you'll know your car's got start stop because you've got the start stop button there that will be blank like that one is if you haven't got start stop uh, all the cars after 2000 and mid 2010 have got stop start stop um, and if you do if yours is pre start stop the time on your display will be really big um, so you need to make sure you get one that's the same from that same generation um, if your car is got start stop the the, uh, the mileage and the clock are about the same sort of size uh, so you'll know which one you've got there uh, so it's quite important certainly for if you've got a stop start car you don't want to get one from a non-stop start car because the speedo from a non-stop start stop car doesn't have the facility on the display to display start stop so you won't know from your display whether your start stops on or not uh, so make sure you get one from the same generation if you're going to take the opportunity to upgrade to the to the nice color led screen or lcd screen rather uh, you can do that uh, but again if you've got a pre facelift car to so pre what mid 2015 stroke 16 onwards if you've got one before that so the one with this type of stereo not the one with a the screen then you need to get one from that same generation of car so if it doesn't say so on the display on the sorry on the listing uh, on ebay uh, you need to ask a question because sometimes they say from 2018 to 2019 or whatever that's not the case if you get one from a 2016 onwards car and yours is an earlier car they won't work properly it will work but it won't work properly um, now that, apart from that the most important thing is if your car's done 50,000 miles and you buy one that's got 40,000 miles on it that's hard written into the speedo it can be changed it can be done at fiat or some independents might be able to do it but also you can do it with using multi ECU scan uh, which is a piece of software that costs 50 euros uh, from multi ECU scan.net I'll put some pictures up of it here um, and you can up the mileage on there uh, there is a video if you look at the how-to videos there is a video of how that's done um, you can't you can go up so if you buy one that's got 40,000 on it and your car's done 50 you can use the software and put your car up to 50 you can't do it the other way you can't buy a speedo that's got 80,000 miles on it and reduce it down to 50 for obvious reasons so that's something to be aware of and a lot of the adverts you get for speedos they don't actually put the mileage or display the mileage in the picture so you need to make sure you do get one if your car's done 90,000 miles you're probably pretty safe buying one and it's probably going to have done less than that but that is certainly one of the most common things to go so if you've got any issues with that as I say you can send it off I think it's 140 pounds to have it repaired you've got to take it out and send it off and then they repair it and send it back um, personally I wouldn't bother doing that because it's cheaper just to get a replacement one um, also there is something a, a good bargaining point on uh, a Fiat 500 you often get right down here there's a weak point on the plastic glass and you'll get a little crack appear and that crack will gradually 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 spread up here if you look there and you see that little crack there's another bargaining point if you're buying a Fiat 500 because you can say that's cracking and I know I've been told by Paul at Love 500 that that crack's going to end up coming all the way up so you can replace the glass you can buy a, an old second hand one that's um, maybe even one that's not working and just take the glass off of it it's, it's, there's a few plastic tabs around the outside that you press in take it off and you put the new one on so it's not difficult so that is one of the other most common faults on a Fiat 500 So going back to uh, under here where the water collects that channel all the way along there water collects there and there are drain holes under here can't just get there so there's a drain just there there's a rubber bung if you can see it just there now they get blocked there's another one up behind here as well somewhere there's two of those and they get blocked with gunk if they get blocked then the water doesn't drain down onto the ground underneath it stays in here and the water you'll hear when you're driving along you'll hear water sloshing if you've got that sloshing noise you need to unblock those and uh, let the water drain out and make sure they are kept unblocked also just there let me use my finger to point just there is another drain hole same both sides make sure they're kept clear put a screwdriver into it make sure they're kept clear there's a video on the how-to series of how to do it and shows you it with this taken off one of the problems this will cause apart from making things go rusty is the water can find its way from there 
into the cabin. So not only do you get wet carpets, but let me show you something else. Under here, you can see that box just there. That is the airbag ECU. So if you've got any problems happening with your airbag system, you've got lights up on your dash, it could be caused by water coming through from that scuttle panel onto that ECU and frying it. If that happens, your ECU is knackered and you're going to have to get a new one, which can prove expensive. So check that. Make sure when you get into the car, if you're thinking of buying it, have a feel of the carpets, both sides. See if they're wet. If they are, have a feel, put your arm around the back there on top of that box, see if it's wet and check that scuttle panel, make sure it's free of water. Again, another bargaining chip for you when you're uh, looking at buying one of these cars. And it's also something that you need to be aware of and uh, for maintenance as well. So that's yet another common fault with a Fiat 500. So this isn't a fault, this is just something to be aware of. A lot of people aren't aware of this. Under this passenger seat, this what is at the moment a very dirty passenger seat, is a little secret compartment. You, you flip up the front of the seat, and then you flip up the back of the seat, and under there is a box. I always keep my uh, locking wheel nut key in there, but you can put your sat-nav in there, your bag, anything you like, just keeps it out of uh, the eyes of, it's, it doesn't lock or anything like that, but as most Fiat 500 owners don't to, even know they've got it, probably Fiat 500 thieves and car thieves in general probably don't even know it's there either. So uh, yeah, that's how I say, that's not, that's not a fault, that's just a little added extra that a lot of people don't even know about. So now we're sitting in the back of the car. This is another not, not so common fault, but it does happen. So running behind that area, going all the way to the front, and then coming up underneath here is the wiring loom. It's the same wiring loom that eventually serves the, uh, the hatch, as well as lots of other wiring. So at the back of that hatch, you've got your uh, rear squirter for your, um, your windscreen wiper. And the pipe for that is a concertina pipe that runs along there and then comes up here and then up there and goes out back into the hatch. That can sometimes crack and leak. Telltale sign, you'll get a wet carpet down here, which mine is nice and dry. If that carpet down there is wet, chances are you've got a leaking pipe. If that's the case, you need to repair it. So the way to repair it, you've got to take off this panel here. So to do that, unfortunately, you've got to take the seats out. You've got to take that, the seats out, the base of the seat out, and you've got to take this panel off. If you look at some of my other videos, you'll see how to do all that. Seat belt has to all come off. It's a bit of a bit of a job. And then once you've got it all got it all off, you'll see all the pipe there. So you'll be able to tell them where the actual leak is coming from. And then um, you need to fix it. So you can uh, you can get bits of uh, connector pipes from various places. Um, and then just put in a new piece of pipe and, and then wrap it all up and stop the leak. But uh, it, I say it's not, it's not one, of the, one of the most common things, but it does happen. So that's another thing to be aware of. People also often ask, why am I Fiat 500? I started doing Fiat 500s. I thought that Fiat 500 drivers were very dirty people. Some of them probably are, but... Um, often get all these types of stains. This one is quite bad, but not as bad as many I've had. It tends to show up more on the, the grey and white dog tooth finish seat covers. Um, I discovered what was causing it. During the winter, which it is now, it's December now, during the winter, you get condensation in the car. If you've got a lounge with a glass roof, condensation will end up on the bottom of that roof and will drip onto your seats. So what I suggest you do, is what I haven't done at the moment, is in the winter, keep that closed, at least while you're not driving the car. And that will stop the, the condensation dripping onto your seats. Top tip. So again, that's not a fault, but it's something to be aware of. So I think that's about it for the faults. Obviously there are many, many faults, and there are many faults that, that happen on all cars. 
Um, but they are, they are, from my experience, and I think from many other people's experience, the, probably the most common things that go wrong with Fiat 500s. Um, there will be other people that will put messages onto this list, onto this uh, video and say, what about this? And I'm sure that there's, there's probably one or two I might have forgotten about. There are issues sometimes with the coil pack. So this is a coil pack. This is actually the coil pack off of this car. As you can see, I'm doing some work on this, so I've taken the coil pack off. So the coil pack plugs in, the electrical connection that plugs in there, and then you've got the spark plug leads. So if, if, you, get a, if you get a garage to scan your car and they say you, you need a new coil pack, don't go to Fiat and buy one for, I dread to think how much, 250 quid or something stupid. Go on eBay and you'll get one of these for 30 quid or less, actually, probably, probably 20 quid. Do that, use one of these. You, you often get the leads with it, so you know if it was just a, just one of the plug leads, you've got a complete coil pack. It's literally a 10 minute job. That can also be another common fault. Uh, and it's an easy, easy job to change. You don't need to be a mechanic to do that, that's for sure. So I think that's actually about it. So hopefully some of these things that I've shown you, you know, it's not a complete exhaustive list of things that go wrong on Fiat 500s. There are other things, but I think what I've shown you are the most common things. So many of those things, if you're looking at a car, look out for some of those things and you might get a few quid off. Uh, and as general maintenance for a car, it, they're things that are always good to be aware of and make sure that they're right. Also, Fiat 500 engines, the 1.2 fire engine, fire engine, this one's in red as well, so it is a really a fire engine. Um, the 1.2 fire engine is a, quite an old engine, but it's a, it's a tried, tested engine that will go on forever, as long as you look after it. You need to keep it oiled and watered. Don't use water. If, if you run out of coolant for whatever reason, or if your coolant is low, don't put water in it. If you put water in it, then it will, you'll end up rust in the radiator in no time at all and the car will go wrong your radiator will burst you don't want to have naked water going around your system you need to put proper coolant in it use the pink coolant is the best one to use you can buy it in five litre containers ready mixed use that or you can buy it concentrate and then mix it with um, uh, water not water out the tap I think you need to use um, deionized water I'm not sure about that but by the ready mixed it's, um, it's, it's just a lot easier and uh, to fill it Coolant goes in there. So these aren't very good to see. The, it, the plastic on these is not very good. It's translucent and it's quite difficult to, uh, to see the level. But if you take the top off, shine a torch in there. This, is, this one's virtually empty because I've got a water leak on this one. Um, but uh, yeah, then, then fill it. Don't fill it right to the brim. There's a minimum and a maximum mark here only fill it to there. If it is empty, then you'll have air in the system and you'll end up having to bleed it, but um, that will be on another video anyway. The other thing, of course, is your oil. There's your dipstick. You've got a minimum and a maximum mark on there. As you can see, mine's about halfway between the two. I haven't wiped it, so you take the dipstick out, wipe the dipstick, put it back, leave it a few seconds, pull it out and see. And you can also see the condition of the oil. The oil in this is relatively new, so it's still sort of oily color rather than black. So that's a good indication uh, of the uh, condition of the oil and the level of it as well. Again, use the correct oil. Put the registration number of your car into any of the online places, depending on what engine you've got, depends on what oil you use. Uh, and the oil goes in here. So use a funnel, you take that off, put a funnel in there, put some oil in it, let, let it settle, check the levels again. Don't overfill it because you can do as much damage to your engine having too much oil in it as not enough. So be very careful. And another thing when you're buying a car, take this off, take the oil cap off. If you see nice black oil or brown oil, you know, oil color, new oil color on there, then it's good. If, you, if that looks like mayonnaise under there, creamy mayonnaise, you've got a blown egg gasket. If water mixes with oil, you end up with that mayonnaise. So if you see that on a car, you probably want to walk away because that will be an expensive repair for a new head gasket. I think that is about it. Again, brakes are another thing. That um, Brakes are consumables on these cars. Back brakes don't really go. The only thing that will really go on a back brake is the cylinder, which aren't expensive to replace. Uh, the front brakes, uh, they often need pads and they often need discs as well, like a lot of cars these days. If you do it yourself, you're talking of 25 quid for the parts for both sides something like that 25 30 quid for for 
for non-OEM parts, but if you take it to a garage, uh, you'll probably pay somewhere in the region of 150 to 200 pounds for new front brake pads and discs. They're easy to do yourself. It's literally a half hour job, um, 15, 20 minutes aside, that's all it is. But again, it's not really much of a bargaining chip when you're uh, when you're buying a car, but you know, if you can look at the pads and you can see that they're uh, they're quite worn, then again, it might be some, some way that you can knock money off. So if you're new to the channel, if you've never seen the channel before, it's Love 500. We repair crash damaged, light crash damaged, sometimes a little bit heavier crash damaged, stolen recovered Fiat 500s. We're currently up to number 60 as of December 2020. There were lots of videos. Look back through the How To series if there's things you want to know how to do on the Fiat 500 and also look through all the projects that are there as well. And there'll be lots more to come over the coming months and years, hopefully. The channel is growing massively now. We're getting lots more subscribers. It's doing really well. And that's thanks to you, the viewers. So please, if you're not a subscriber, please like, share, and subscribe to the video. And hit that notification bell to be notified when we upload new content. And thanks for watching. And for now, stay safe, and we'll see you soon.